Southwick Lanes for BCSN's coverage of Toledo Metro League High School Bowling. As usually, we start the day with our King of the Hill matchup, seeing if Ty Zeroff can defend his title. Then it'll be the St. Francis Knights taking on the Toledo Technology Academy Tigers in our team matchup. High School Bowling on BCSN is brought to you by Southwick Lanes and by Shopmakers Pro Shop. Get in the game. I'm Steve Ronquist alongside my broadcast partner, six-time PBA National Tournament champion Don Janello. We are one week away from the position round for next week, and then after that, it is championship week. We're getting towards the end of this thing. Yeah, it seems like the season just started. We're all ready about to end it as Ty Zero starts off with what we're used to seeing from him, a big strike. Ty is, of course, our King of the Hill, reigning King of the Hill champion. He will be opposed today by Nick Homer, and I don't know that we've seen Nick in the King of the Hill before, so it's nice to get some some fresh blood in there. I've seen him a few times on the team portions. Hold it a little bit. Hold it, hold it. it does. Yes, sure does. So both these guys in the King of the Hill start with strikes. That's what you always like to see from them. So yeah, starting to wind things down. St. Francis and Toledo Technology Academy trying to wind their way up to standings. And uh, like you say, we'll have a position round next week that'll make things clear as to how it's all gonna play out in the championship week and the way things are kind of heading. And this is uh, no shock, is it looks like Penna County is gonna be the uh, Penna Cruz. Sorry, I showed my age right there. Uh, gonna end up being a three-thirds champion. Yeah, they've uh, been strong all year and uh, it was a little bit of a battle, middle of this, of this third, but they've pulled away away as the season has gone on. So, so if that w is indeed the case, we will bring you another championship, whether the uh, be the gold or the silver. That one's going to be into yeah. the channel. So Nick not able to convert on the 10 pin, opens in the second. Yeah, threw two excellent shots there. The second one didn't carry. Along the 10, and this is a player you don't want to give an opening to. 228 average you see there for Ty, actually 228.9. So he is on the cusp of getting to the 229. I don't think he's going to have enough pins to be able to hit the 230 mark over he's the next couple of weeks, but you never know. Yeah, he's going to have to go very big. He's Ooh, capable of it. He went big split, yeah. is what he went. Ouch. That one got away from you. You can tell the way he fell off the shot, it wasn't a good one. 2, 4, 8, 10. If he wants to try and make this with his power, he can do it. Get the ball to the left of the two pin, barely touch it, and hope it kicks off the wall and get the 10 out. The 4 should take out the 8. Going with the urethane ball, I'm thinking he's just going to take the 3. Okay. Oh, still oh. bouncing around back there. You don't know. Almost came back and got himself a big shot right there. That's the other option, bounce it around and hope. Well, he did, and he did, but it didn't come to fruition. Back to the left-hand lane for Ty Zero. He had a strike there to start things off in the first. The two-hander uses shot. a lot in the center of the lane, puts all ten of them in the pit. Much better shot there. Didn't get near as far right. Let's see if Nick can bounce back off. Miss spare. Nick bowls for Northview High School, but attends Springfield. He's a sophomore there. Started bowling at 8, eight and come on. There, go. there you go. Took out the 10 pin. So Nick's like in the right hand lane. Ty's like in the left. Comes in a little bit late. Splashes him a little bit. Messenger came across, but the six had already taken care of the 10. So double messenger work. The short messenger and the long messenger. It's like backing up your system. You want to make sure you have a have one in case the other one doesn't get there. Well, it carry. And ah. Oh, the 10 pin again. He has been terribly consistent. Four excellent shots. Unfortunately for him, only two of them have carried. Got to make the spare. 278 high game for Nick Homer, 727 high series all time. Looking to unseat Ty Zirok, who's the king of the hill, takes care of the 10 pin this time. Ty 
Paradise sporting the pink shoes this week again. And making the fashion statement that only Ty Zeroff can get away with. Saw those for the first time last week when he was wearing them, and saw a player in our travel league wearing them. Seems to be the new fashion trend. Must be double four tie. Hey, if it helps you throw strikes, so much the better. Nice shot here. See him post the shot. Nice shot on that lane. He fell off early. Much better here. You know, we've talked about Ty so much this year and his ability as a two-hander to keep the head still and the body really kind of going all in one direction mm -hmm. instead of all over the place. And he's really done a good job in corralling what can be almost a mess at yeah. times, you know. Very tough style to, to get down. He's going to be a little light and not going to be able to carry out the two-pin. Got away from him a little bit, but still in good shape. Should be a pretty easy spare right in the middle of the alley and takes care of it. Nick moves back over to his right-hand lane where he's had strikes in the first and the third, looking to reprise that role here in the fifth and then trying to figure out the left lane. Big high backswing. And does take care of the 10 pin there. Almost like a replay of his previous shot on that lane. Stays within nine pins of Ty Zero. Nick looking to string a couple together right here. Throws one here. He's just about even. Got to figure out how to get the 10 pin out. a little bit of an adjustment there we go made the adjustment to take care of the strike whatever it may have been he's got that high backswing as you mentioned he hits the shoulders very much open he does a very nice job of closing him with the pointer release so he stays on target now Ty heads back to the right hand lane had a strike there his last time of the left-hand turn. He's going to have to make some sort of adjustment. Ball's going a little bit too long on him. Three out of the six shots so far. and it drifts too far left. Ty's had a couple of strikes on the left. He's trying to find one here, and he does. Nice looking shot right there. He's been about as consistent on the left lane as Nick Homer has been on the right lane. So Nick can keep it going here. Been in the pocket every shot, just lost two to the ten pins. See the shoulder wide open, nice and square at the line. has got a hold. And ten pin again. It's third ten pin of the game. Convert the spare for a two pin lead. square when you're that much open. He's just ahead of his backswing almost perpendicular to the line with his shoulders. And hops right 
back on the strike train right there in the left hand lane. Good shot there because he's going to finish on that lane. He wants to make sure he gets the lane down in case he needs to make shots in the tip. Ty looking for his second double of the game right here. See if he makes the adjustment. He's been drifting a little bit late. Turn it in there. Oh, that was a boomer right there. No doubt about that one. Sent all ten of them straight back. Time for four 300 games to his credit. 815 high series. As on his bio sheet, I look up to Katie Pekrashevsky. Ty looks up to about everybody. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Getting towards the end of the season. season. I can get the game. Ouch. It up a little bit high, and the nine pin doesn't want to play. Excellent shot there. Nine times out of ten, that's oh, going to be yeah. a strike. Sometimes you have too much power. The ball drove too hard that time. It's going to give Nick an opening. Cross alley, make sure he takes care of business. Right down to the wire here. The door is open. Let's see if Nick can go through. Hasn't missed the pocket there. He's throwing the ball very well. Left a 10 pin on the right hand lane last time. Gets it out on the lane and got the strike. A double big time in the eighth and ninth. Big shot right there for Nick Homer. Gives him the lead going into the tenth. Now let's see if he can close it out. Nine spare nine will do you enough if my map is right. Nick also plays baseball. Looking for the first one in the tenth. And what character? And ouch. Seven pin this time. Off. Sorry about that. If he makes this and strikes, he'll have 186. Ty can throw a double to beat him. Got a turn. Oh, no. He has bowled so well. And then to have an open in the 10th. 194 for Nick Homer. I needs a mark of any type. Uh, Nick pulled an excellent game too. The spares a 10 pin and a 7 pin. He's got away from him. Let's see if Ty can finish it off. Now he's going to leave a 10 pin. Great shot. He needs to make the spare. Average like he has almost 229. That's. Should be a given, but you never know in this game. Strange things happen. Cross Looks alley, good. He takes care of it. Now it's just keep the ball on the lane. Behind the foul line, keep it on the lane, or just get a strike and make life easy. Ty Zero defends his title as the king of the hill. Ty shoots 203 to get the victory. Nick Homer was in this game all the way until the 10th frame, then not able to convert the spare in the 10th. That was the difference in this one. Zero comes away with the 203 to 194 victory. We step aside when we come back. It'll be time for the St. Francis Knights and the Toledo Technology Academy Tigers to do battle when we return. Justin Oberly and Ethan Gunther when we return to Southwick Lane.
a fun year here on Ice Check. We're looking forward to it, Matt. We're ready to go again. We are. High school hockey time. Let's get it going. Andon Kolb high on the pair through those first two. Had a great game that first game, 256. What was working so well for you? I don't know. I got a new ball since the last time I bowled on TV. I've been really been able to really control it. How long is it taking you to kind of get used to that new bowling ball? Uh, bowl three, four games and you'll be fine. Had a little bit of a struggle then in the second game. Shot 180, not a bad game, but just not that 256. Lanes chain on it, change on you a little bit? Uh, no, somebody was throwing a different, uh, like a urethane ball over where I was throwing my ball, and I had to move left more. All right, we had yourselves a pretty successful season this year. What'd you like about the season so far? Just making a whole bunch, just making a lot of new friends with all of the other teams. All right, congratulations on your first two games. Go get them in the third. Thank you. All right, Andy Kolb, high on the pair so far. BCSN, available exclusively on Buckeye Broadband, is presented by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you, and by Yark Automotive, just what you're looking for. Welcome back to Southwick Lanes. Time for the team portion now of the program as the St. Francis Knights and the Toledo Technology Academy Tigers face off in this one it'll be Justin Oberly to start things off for the Knights 185 average for Justin shot 191 185 in his first two and he starts with a strike drifted up a little bit high on him trips out to 4-7 nice shot brings up Ethan Gunther 161 average for Ethan both games over average shot 202 and 177. He's gotten off to a good start, and he does here as well. Strike for him. These guys are getting out of the gate in a hurry. Good to see them getting going here. Ethan, a sophomore at TTA started bowling at age 13, so hasn't been doing this a whole long period of time. Brooklyn and okay. got the strike. He's gonna pull out all the shots. Let's go to the well early. See if it's working. See 
tightly bent arm swing. This one got pulled a little bit. The six pin went to the wall, tripped out the, or tripped out to the wall. A little high, 4-7. Yeah, Justin says, I'm going to head over there towards the Brooklyn side as well, but he just never quite made it there. Should be an easy spare for the St. Francis Jr. He started bowling at age 10, 279, high game. 646, high series. Well, players end over ends pretty much straight down the lane. Not a whole lot of turn. That's got a turn. Touch the four. Oh, it did oh. touch the four, just not quite strong enough. Justin Oberly with an open in the second. He'll look to right the ship here a little bit as he heads back to the left-hand lane. Nice shot here. Ouch. Oh. Deflected on him. That ball started to drive, and like you said, it just stopped. Went straight back. Sent the five in front of the eight, and the six went around the ten. So pocket split. Just pick one and hope you can bounce it out. Two pins are straight across from each other. Justin will look to take one, and he does. Back-to-back so -back opens in the second and third for Justin Oberly. Leaves the door open for Ethan Gunther. Started with a couple of strikes. And that one's never going to make the left hand turn. Yeah, Missed the off ramp. Just kept going. Use the one two. Should be an easy spare right in the middle of the lane. Ethan's high game, 259. That was bold this year. He's got lots of cross outs on his. Bio sheet 579 high series. Everyone does take care of business on the spare. Justin and Ethan have split their first two games. Ethan got the victory head to head in game number one. Justin got the win in game number two. The rubber match between these two. To the left straight. Ooh, that one's going to go Brook again. Yes. Got the trip six going How about again. about that? Had to wait a second for it, but able to get the strike. Justin looking to right the shoulder. Got that one in the pocket. Got a little bit of help. Five pin won't go, however. A makeable spare here. Here's the five. 279 high game for Justin. 646 high series. Also plays basketball and tennis. Looking to take care of the spare. He does. Five team didn't stand a chance. He's got to get a little bit stronger roll. The ball's deflecting on him. Could try moving maybe a little bit further to the right. Create a better angle. Justin comes from a bowling family. He said his grandpa, uncle, and brother have all thrown 300s. He says he's next in line. Looking to find a strike right here. Nice looking shot. Got Ooh. it up just a little bit high, and he'll have to split. Trying to get the ball to roll a little bit better, and rolled too soon. Paid for with the 4 6 7. Again, one of those annoying splits where the pins are straight across from each other. So yeah. Try and drop it straight over or bounce it out of the back. Not a whole lot you can do about it. Hope to get some help from the equipment. Yeah, pick the two. Hope for a break. Yeah, I took the two on the left side. And Justin's run into a case of the opens here.
Ethan Gunther's looking for a second double in the game. Got that one a little high. Unusual trip four, but he got the trip. He's taken 30 yards in penalties in the last two shots on the clipping call, but he gets the strikes regardless. The refs are going to have a sore arm from throwing the flags. You don't mind taking the penalties. Yeah. As long as you get credit for the touchdowns. Furman Street will carry looking for the turkey. Yes, it will. Left a couple of them on the deck, but he got the turkey. The Glenn Tanner Memorial strike right there. That was fun. I don't think he's going to like the memorial part. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw that in there. I know. <laughs> see if he was paying attention. See if I get an email. Oh, oh it's poor. not again. Poor young man is just paying for everything. Mm. Other split. Justin Oberly. Take the two on the right. Hope you bounce that. Hang on, ball. Ooh. Went for it. Yeah. I figured he had nothing to lose at that point. Why not? Try for a highlight reel. And the ball just kept going. Three splits in the game. Find something to get a little momentum going here. There, there we there go. There you got the splasher to go. That's what I've been trying to do all along. Enough, he can still strike it. He can make his error. Ethan's got other ideas. That's what you turn ball about. Starts to turn. A lot of pin action down there. But not able to capitalize on the turkey that was working for him. 2 4 should be a fairly easy spare. Basically down the middle of the lane. Does take care of that. The commanding lead at the moment for Ethan Gunther. Can't get complacent, however, like you said, Justin still strike out for 190. In the pocket, can't get the seven pin to play nice this time. has it locked up as only just fills his frames. Cross alley at the spare. Just a little hook it. Turn ball, yeah, turn ball. No, it did oh. not. Just did not want to make that turn. If Justin can find something on the right lane here. Right. Get a flip down the middle. Double for Justin Oberly. And you want to keep your team in that team total as well. well the two teams have split the match so far, 9-9. Nine nine, so. You know, it, like you say, through all the struggles that he's had through the first six frames, the last four can give you redemption and still pull out a good game. Get, get up, for another get one up. right here. He's not going to make it, however. A little Just too far to the right. Doesn't have quite enough right to left hand movement. One, two, eight. That's a double wood, but he makes his call either fairly square on the head pin or on the Brooklyn side. Should be no problem. Right down the middle, I think he does take care of all three pins with the ball. Let's see if Ethan can rebound here from the spare. He had a great game going until then. Hold. He's got it going well. He's had two Brooklyn strikes. And neither one of them has been a gimmick. Nice day for Ethan. 161 average. He's been over both games and well over this game. 
possible 234 if you can strike out. Turn up, ball turn. Yep, this is not going to make it up the hill. Come on, pull And not going to get the comebacker either. We haven't had one of those. We need one of those. We'll get that right after we get my Dutch 200. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get that for the Dutch 200. <laughs> Could be. Here, two birds with one Hang stone. on, ball. Hold it a little bit. Still an excellent game. Right at the 200 mark, so a couple of 200s and a 177 for the 161 average bowler. Gives him a 579. Oh, there you go. Thank you. That would have been the total injustice right there for a young man who has been dealt just a split-itis throughout the day. Yeah, so if I get a figure right, Ethan had 579. That's cross out, however. There for Justin Oberlin. Marvor Small, it's still nice to see. You are correct, sir. At least by my math as well. Either we're both right or we're both wrong. Never trust my maths. I don't know anyone that does. Big and he does. Nice work to get the strike to finish things out. Not the game he was hoping for, but with all the adversity that he went through, 155, not quite so bad. It was Ethan Gunther to shoot 200 to get the victory. 200, 155. We step aside when we come back. It'll be Sam Luther and Karsten Mays when we return to Southwick Lanes. It'll be Karsten Mays and Sam Luther in game number two of the team portion of our program for the St. Francis Knights and the TTA Tigers. Of course, if you're not familiar with Toledo Technology Academy, it is in the former DeVilbus building, and they kept the name Tigers from oh. the DeVilbus Tigers. Actually, I did not know that. Years gone by, Karsten Mays starts with a strike. That's kind of been the theme here today. Everybody gets out to a Big strike for the start. If they can just keep it going, we need to get a 300 game here. We need one before the end of the season. Brings up Sam Luther, 155 average, 190 in game number one, well over his average, and then something happened in game number two. He really struggled, looking to find a way back this time. Goes high, leaves the 3 6 10. Put the ball to the right of the three pin. Let it deflect down the line. 286 high game for Sam Luther, 630 high series. Pushed it. And it came back at me. Yes, it did. Like the way he turned around, I think. <laughs> I don't think he was too happy with yeah. it, but it found its way to its intended target. It could be that we misread his body English, but right? Got the impression he thought he missed it by a mile. And it was a beautiful shot. He's got his hand wrapped up. Wonder if he heard it doing something. Probably from shuffling snow. 
got a blister. Looking for a strike right here goes Brook, and not going to be able to complete the deal. A little bit more ball speed to get that ball to hold. He's getting into the dry part of the lane a little bit too soon. Ball change for the spare. Most of the lane takes care of things, so a couple of spares to start for Sam Luther. Karsten Mays, 157 average. He's been over his average both games. Shot 199 in game one, 163 in game two. Most of these bowlers have been better in game one than they have in game two. Karsten looking to start with a double. He goes Brook and five pin says nope. At least the six got out of there. Makes life much easier for the St. Francis sophomore. Pin right in the middle of the lane. Just throw your normal first ball at it. 275 high game for Karsten, 573 high series. Right down the middle of the lane, takes care of business. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, Karsten also plays basketball. Tall, got, lanky player. Yeah. You can see him doing that. He's got the height for it. But has been a very successful St. Francis basketball season so far. Karsten looking for another strike right here. Got that one a little high on the beak, but comes out of it in pretty good shape. Four seven. I'm starting to say six ten. Don't know where I got that from. But. Cross alley. You were looking at it in selfie mode. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Mirror image. I know you're a big selfie taker. Yeah. <laughs> with, with my face made for radio. Preston <laughs> <laughs> takes care of the spare. Seems to have been a lifelong problem, as evidenced by my card that they used to show. <laughs> so I had the bowling ball. <laughs> All the photos they <laughs> took for that photo shoot, they took the one where he used the one where it's hiding my face. <laughs> I thought those were all for doing a cameo home improvement <laughs> <laughs> strike there for Sam Luther. That's probably where they got the idea. I actually watched uh, your match the other day from uh, when I posted the 95 yeah. Toledo. Yeah, uh -huh. that was. It's too bad Wayne decided to bowl so well <laughs> against me that time. Well, those things happen. Yeah, you don't like it when your opponent wants to win the game. He doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Luther looking for a double here. Way out on the lane goes Brooklyn. Five pin. We've seen that a couple of times today. Almost like the five pins more than the ten because people tend to make five pins. Ten is the one of the more difficult one pin spares out there. And he takes care of the five pin. Let's see if Karsten can get going here. He's up to a good start with a strike and two spares. See if it'll hold. That one turn. Oh, oh get out there we go. Going, Come on, one going. more. Almost. Went from a potential 5 7 10 to just leaving the 10 pin. We like that a lot better. Almost took out the 10 pin. Nice shot. The ball just quit on a little bit entering. That's why it deflected. The head pin did some damage. 
Ball change for the spare. He can stay in the match here. So up almost all the way up against that ball return. Got a slide. And it will not. So open in the fourth for Carson May. start bowling until age 14 so I think those two things are pretty darn close to one another right. he was doing very well for the short time he's at it and they are a little more aggressive on that they go Brooklyn again however up the speed just a little bit yeah I like that I like to see a tall player like that use a little bit more of his height and get more ball speed on it a little more reach out there He's been bowling long. He'll learn it. Have to take care of business here. He does. So Mays keeps it full in frame number five. Sam Luther's kept him full through the first four. Been a spare shooting machine. Also rides BMX bikes. Can hold. Looks good. Yes, sir. Sent all ten of them straight back and forth that time. No doubt about it. Sam's got a very simple line for success. As he gets older, he says he wants to make money, buy cars, and be successful. Pretty well takes care of business right there. No details. So yep. Way inside, he's got the strike. And the double for Sam Luther. The TBD to be determined. <laughs> That's right. As long as it's all legit, who cares? works out for you. Karsten Mays needs to find a strike. One of the times that Karsten was on, he got up a little bit of a slow start and put a five-bagger together at the end. Let's see if he can do it again. There goes Brooklyn. Ooh, almost got a break and carried to Brooklyn. Lost the memo from Ethan on how to trip the six pin out. Sally, hang on to it. He does. Spare for Karsten Mays in the sixth. Find that strike shot right here. pin over into the 10 pin. One of those pins over there. A lot trickier the other way. Make for a nice highlight for the shot. Just essentially throw Brooklyn here. That'll give it a chance. Got a chance. And he'll take care too. Starting to make the turn and quit on him. Double working right here, looking for a turkey. Right down the middle of the lane. Oh, oh yeah, cave in the four six. That's the easy way to do it. Best way to make it. Cave them in towards one another.
Got the turkey working. Let's see what Warbagger. Oh, not going to happen this time. Excellent shot. He has been right around the pocket where he's ne needed to be all game long. Let's see if we can keep it full here. Turn ball. Good ball. There you go. He started to make that move a little late. I was starting to get a little bit worried. Glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> I was in full Don Janello there mode. You go. <laughs> this is where everybody wants to be. <laughs> They are. Hey, we did have one of the you know, players that wants my spot, wants my seat. So that's right. Poor kid. Matter of fact, I believe that that I think it was Nick, if I remember correctly. I believe you're right, Nick Homer. Two, four, eight, double wood. Try and get this ball square on the two pin if you can. Well. All I have to say about that is if Nick Homer aspires to be Don Janello, he's got low aspirations. <laughs> to take care of business right there, Kirsten Mays does. He's got to sign up with the USPS <laughs> first and then do this as his side, side list. Staying just a tad higher. <laughs> Kirsten <laughs> Mays is looking to set up the tenth here. She needs a strike. The bar is set very low there, dude. <laughs> Strike. There you go. He went to the well in the ninth. Sets up the tenth. Still a possible 191. Sam just needs a decent finish to lock up the point. Hey, you've seen some strange things happen. We have. We've seen some of them today, as a matter of fact. Sam has kept it full through the first days, looking to continue. Got it up high. Oh! There's that one. The shot that he wanted in the ninth. Four nine. Trying to get this ball a little bit to the left of the four pin. Turn it over into the middle. Let's see if we can get highlight reel here. Slow hook. Got, a Got it out there. Ooh, that one took a hard left. Shouldn't be a problem, but he needs eight out on two shots to lock up his points. And he needs a spare to put him in the 200s, which would be a great comeback game for him. Like we said, he shot 190 in the first game, and then nothing went right for him game number two. Let, came back with a 110, looking for a 200 right here. And he do himself it. a very makeable spare. like to see a player who can have that comeback game after a struggle. Excellent effort, just the one split. Hopefully he'll pick up the spare here. Off to the way out, way right. Is that left hand turn again. Spare in the tenth for Sam Luther. Things should have to signal if it's going to yeah. turn that hard. Six or more. Set it down, went for another one. Sam Luther keeps it on the lane. To get a strike, he got the splasher to go. 204 for Sam Luther. Down on his comments here, on one last thing on Sam Luther. He's got down here saying, and then he's got a name crossed out as his favorite coach. And then after the cross out, he's got John. So I don't know whether he changed his mind on who his favorite coach was or not. <laughs> Maybe it Karsten Mays goes. Come on, lean on it. They're both wiggling in opposite directions, and neither one of them will fall down. That's kind of the microcosm of the game that he's had. 
definitely got a cross out there, so <laughs> one must have uh, one must decided have given to buy a lunch or something. <laughs> I'm going to say better advice. There could be a lunch involved. When I was a kid, food always worked for me. So. That's right. Carson Mays looking for the spare. Uh, oh! No. So it'll be a 159 game for Karsten Mays. It is over his average, and that's what you look for, game in and game out. Able to get that game over his average. Had all three of them over his average. But it was Sam Luther to shoot 204 to get the victory, 204 to 159. When we come back, it'll be Ian McKnight and Andon Kolb when we return to Southwick Lane. Welcome back to Southwick Lanes. It'll be Ian McKnight and Andon Kolb in our third team game. Ian comes in with a 163 average, 180 in game one, 153 in game number two, and ooh, he starts with the split. Another fairly straight down and in player, and this one got too much head pin. Unfortunately, paid for it with the. Four six. Take a pin and hope you can bounce it around. Means he'll take care of one, so an open in frame number one. Plenty of time to write that open. around 180 degrees did it in Cole. Wow. And he's laughing at us. How do you spin it around like that and not fall over? And it comes in 176 average. He shot 256 in that first game. Backed it up with 187. Right down the middle of the lane. Takes care of the five pin. change here. We've seen this before. Just go three on the right hand side. Down the right side. Turn a little. Ooh. Didn't. Just kept going. So he chopped it open in the second for Andon Cole. Opening for Ian to get back in it here. He can find a strike. Oh, wrapped it right around the tenth. And that's the first time we've said that today. Not too many ten pins. Nice shot there, though. That's the spare. He's right back in the game. I don't believe Ian Bold the last time St. Francis was on. Yeah, I don't recall seeing him. This is his Hang maiden on. voyage. Oh, it did. Just enough lane left to take care of the ten pin. <laughs> Looking a little relieved there. Yes. Ian also plays baseball, football, basketball. The big three. 
as we used to call them. The only three back only in three, the day. Yeah, really. Unless you were a wrestler, that was about all that was available. There's a strike that he's looking for. Ian McKnight with his first strike of the game. So Cameron Kolb will head back to the right-hand lane. And Get out of come there. on. Oh, he has had no luck. Tell you, we are flirting with the sour apple here. So the 510 for Andrew Kolb. If you're going to flirt, that's not the partner you want to flirt no, with. It is not. Turn a little bit, ball. Got right, the one. Made sure the five pin was taken care of. That's the safe shot. He's looking at a big day if he can regroup here. It's always nice to start that first game with in the 250s. Makes your life pretty easy after that. That is his new high game, 254 before, 250 zip six today. There we go. He's got what, five or 443 going in, so he doesn't need too big a game to get his new high series. Man, that's 627. Ian McKnight looking for a double, goes Brooklyn, but out of there. again gets a 10 pin to wobble, weeble, won't fall down. 310 just touch the three on the right side, let the ball deflect into the 10. Two thirty-eight high game all time for Ian McKnight, 618 high series. And oh, I thought he had it. I thought he did too. Oh, just slid a little bit too far. Good effort there. So close. Not in bad shape. Even with a couple open so far. So make a good shot here. Will it carry? And pocket oof. split. Eight ten. So all it is is the ball's just not driving quite hard enough, so it sends the five in front of the eight instead of back into it. Looks nice entering the pocket. So back to back splits for Ian McKnight. Bounce it around. And he'll take one again. He had the right idea, send it in the right direction. Big opening for Anton, Anton here, if he can take advantage. Doesn't take a whole lot of time. He knows what he wants to do. That rather high that time, but came out of it in pretty good shape. Right there, the Brooklyn, last time. Hold on. Oh, that one was way out left field. Still falling, however. Got a lot of eights. One three. It's just a pocket shot. Hang on, ball. Don't Seems very much. simple. Ooh. Yes. Freddie was going to drift a little bit there and chop it. Never any doubt. I knew it as soon as they went down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they didn't stand back up. Carry it. There's the strike he needs. 
Hopped right back on the strike train there in the sixth after a couple of splits. Sally at the spare and oh just missed his target. Opens in the eighth. That looked good when he let go of it, but the ball just kept going. Big opening for Ian here. Yeah, he's got a double. Can he take care of it? Yeah, one he's of got the five out of there. Pin looking to bounce right back into the ten, but just won't go. At least he got the five out. Makes this a lot easier. Cross alley. Look to take care of a 10 pin right here. Nice job. Looks good. Right straight at that 10 pin. And he's got the lead. Set up frame. Mark here, he will not be able to be closed out in the 10th frame. So. Ian says, hey, it's taken all this time today to get a lead on Andon Kolb, who has been hot. There's a strike to set up the 10th. Probably his best shot of the match right there. And at a very opportune time. And in 179 possibility if he can, he can go Brooklyn, he got the trip. Because I need to strike badly. Go to the well. Yes, he did. It's only his second strike of the game. If he can somehow strike out, he will force Ian to throw at least the first strike. It's not over yet, folks. That's a big one. First ball here in the tenth for and in Cole. Get out of there. Oh. Looked like he was going to get some help, but just snuck behind the five pin. Third game for Andon Cole. Meanwhile, 
Ian McKnight has a strike working, and he goes to the Brooklyn side again, and he's got a double. It's his second double of the game. Sent those two splits in the fourth and the fifth, and doubled in the sixth and seventh, left a 10-pin in the eighth, which he converted, and then the double in the ninth and the first shot in the tenth. Possible 195 if he can strike out while he carry it. And oh, oh see, that's me. what happens when you put it in the pocket. <laughs> Made the mistake of throwing it good. Give him his second game in the 180s today. So he will be over his average. Excellent game. Just the three splits. Right down the middle, takes care of that. So 184 for Ian McKnight. He gets the victory over Andon Kolb. 184 to 155. We step aside. When we come back, it'll be time for the anchor bowlers to do what anchor bowlers do. It's Jacoby Coleman and Zach Behringer when we return to Southwick Lanes. here at Southwick Lanes in time for the anchor bowlers to show their prowess. It'll be Jacoby Coleman to start things off here for the St. Francis Knights. See that 189 average Jacoby came into the day with. He struggled in his first game, 165, but came back with a nice rebound game, 197 to get over that 189 average. We've seen some big strikes and some good games from Jacoby Coleman over the years, and he starts with the strike. He is going to do 61 pins to make up in that team match, so put a big game up there. Brings up Zach Behringer, 182 average. His first game, 211 and 165. Way outside, brings it back, and it ran out of steam. Likes to loft the ball way out there. Generally speaking, you get a good back end reaction. That way. This one didn't quite get there. Two for eight. Hit the two pin square if you can. take care of business. Zach, a senior at TTA. 4.0, great point average. 276, high game all time. 686, high series. Looking to study mechanical engineering at the University of Toledo. Looking for his first strike right here, and he's got it. 10 in the pit. Kobe. 
We have seen that in the past. Hopefully he's gotten a signed release this time. Yeah. So you don't want anybody looking for royalties. Looking to start with the front three way outside. The comebacker almost got that head pin you were looking for. We're getting closer. It could happen. Kobe started bowling at age five. Gonna study sports medicine. An interesting ball change for the spare. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't help but chuckle at leaving the head bent. Yeah. Whatever works, and that worked. Was Yogi's line 50% of this game is 90% mental or something like that? Something along those lines. That's, that's the gist of it, yeah. He, he feels more comfortable doing that? Go for it. Zach lofts that ball way out there and takes care of all 10. Double for Zach Barringer. their mascot while well, I was looking it up their team colors is orange okay and there's a strike turkey for Zach Behringer I thought that was interesting that's it's very fitting it worked out no complimentary color needed just orange Tiger's already seeing the post about countdown to spring training opening. Woohoo! Being a baseball fan, I can't wait. It's hard to think of it with eight <laughs> inches of snow <laughs> on the ground. But yeah. Oh, Ouch. nice shot. To Kobe Coleman just absolutely rung the 10 pin. What a beautiful shot. Now he has to deal with that 10. school basketball tournament time sneaking up on us. Jacoby cross alley for the 10. He's got it. Some good hockey teams in the area also. Not only uh, high school, but the uh, BG team is doing very well. College team. Good time to be a sports fan in this area. Got a lot going on between the walleye and Rockets. PG. Got a couple of high school boys and girls teams that could make a good long run. Jacoby, all he's thinking about right at the moment, finding a strike right here. It's going to be a little light, however. All around it, he got that double to start out. But plays baseball and basketball. Very good baseball player. He's anticipating warm weather as well. Jacoby looking to take care of business. Wow. That one was way out in the hinterlands there. But it found its way back to its intended target. Yeah, since we're talking about baseball, just a bit outside. <laughs> yes. A yellow hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Zach Barringer has got the turkey working for him. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Way, way out on the lane and perfect. That's exactly where he wanted to put it. Might have been a Ray Guy <laughs> shot there. Lots of hang time. There we go. The youngsters are going, who's Ray Guy? Yeah, get, uh, get those thumbs working on the Googles. <laughs> Zach left that 2-4-8 in the first.
first frame. He's got the four bagger sense. Looking for the good one, and he's got it. That Behringer is on a roll at the moment. Oh man, he's got it going. Said he shot 211 in the first game. Second game struggled with that 165, but he has figured it out here in his third game of the day. Jacoby Coleman needs to find strikes. He's making a ball change, see if he can get something going. It's a ball they used to convert the head pin. He's got a strike. Beautiful looking shot right there for Jacoby Coleman. Keeps himself in the game. Okay, we're going to try a different ball in each lane. See if this will work out for him. He's seeing something out there that says I need to do something out of the ordinary. Now let's see how it works for him. Got in the pocket. Works perfectly. Excellent choice, Mr. Coleman. That's why he's on the lanes and I'm back here. <laughs> That's right. Meanwhile, speaking of five baggers, five in a row for Zach Barringer. Looking for the straight six right here. Just keep doing what you've been doing. Don't change anything. That ball out on the lane. And it did not turn nearly as well as the one before. Yeah, that one laid off on half a loaf. I've been getting that ball a little farther out on the lane, on the right-hand lane. Bucket with the seven pin. Try and get this fairly high on the two pin. There's so many things can go wrong with a leave like this. Looked like you hit it perfect. Yeah, it did. There we go. That one he nice. did hit perfect. Nice shot right there. Yeah, if you're a little light, you don't drive back to the eight pin. If too high, you chop it off. It just great job on that one. See if Zach can hop back on the strike train right here. There he is. And he does. Getting that ball out on that left hand lane. He said, had been lofting it a little farther out on the right, and didn't get it there in the seventh, but made the nice adjustment to get back where he needed to be in the eighth. Meanwhile, Jacoby Coleman has a double working. Two more here in this game to get interesting. Yeah, it looked like he was down and out with the string that Behringer had thrown. Looking for a turkey right here. Nice looking shot. Oh, all ten of them straight back. Strike here, and he's in. He's in eight. We gotta have ourselves a match. Yeah, he can go two fifty-seven. 265 possible, I believe, for Zach, if my that's, math is right. That's what I've got. It's a scary. We're agreeing on numbers today. Yeah, I know. There's no abacus to be found I at know. the moment. I couldn't get into my trunk. It was frozen. <laughs> Kobe got the slasher for the strike in the ninth. So a four-bagger for Jacoby Coleman. That's what we need to get the crowd going. Been awfully silent. Yeah. Players have done well in relation to average, but not a lot of strikes. These guys are putting up some X's, so. Let's see if Zach can close it out here. Nice Looking shot. for the double right here. Oh, beautiful. Ten of them back in the pit. Big time shot right there for Zach Behringer. Rose to the occasion. Throw a couple more, he can close the game out. Don't often see somebody getting up in the tenth with a shot at 260 and needing to do it to lock yeah. in the game. He and Coleman have been going at it tooth and nail. Looking for the first one in the tenth. And he's got it. Up.
puts him in the 250s. One more and keep it on the lane and he wins. Locks it up. Eight strikes so far in the game for Zach Barringer. You want to keep doing just what you've been doing. Nice shot. Pulled it a little bit. Oh, holes. Got it up on the beat. Get out of Go. There. Oh, man. Puts him in the 250s, most likely. He can take care of at least one pin down there. Yeah, I would say, in this case, just take the two. The one pin's not going to matter all that much. He decided he wants to go for a highlight reel. Good job with the two. Take two. 251, great. Yeah. Well, wait and see if it's enough. Yeah. How often have we ever said that? 251 <laughs> not being enough. Well, 251, pretty good score. Jacoby Coleman can strike out. 257, possible. Has to have the first one in the tap. First things first for Jacoby Coleman. Well, I pulled it. He got yeah. it to the Brooklyn side, yeah. and he's going to leave the split. Yeah, he knew when he let, let go of it. You could help hear him say something when the ball came off his hand. And Zach Barringer is going to say, phew. Got the big score. Going to come away with the win. Great game by both players. Just Jacoby just... Got a little bit quick there, got it through the nose. Kind of, I think he was trying to fire that at the one pin and hope to bounce it around, but it didn't work out. Well, it was Zach Barringer shooting the big 251, the big game of the day for sure. King of the Hill, it was Ty Zeroff looking to take care of business, and he did. He shot 203 to get the victory over Nick Homer. Homer threw a really nice game, but uh, it was not one of those where uh, Ty was able to get the victory 203 to 194. Ethan Gunther shoots 200 for a victory for TTA, and then it was also Sam Luther for TTA with the win. Ian McKnight shoots 184, gets the victory for the St. Francis Knights, and then it was Zach Barringer shoots 251 for TTA. Big day for them. Today is Toledo Metro League High School Bowling brought to you in high definition only on BCSN, seen exclusively on Buckeye Broadband. For the hardworking BCSN crew and for Don Janello, I'm Steve Rockwood. Thanks for being with us and make sure you take your family bowling.